So, Cells of Work is an anime series produced by Deva Productions, based on the manga of the same name by Akane Shimizu, that follows the working lives of various cells within the human body, and all the biology-based shenanigans they deal with on a daily basis. But don't be fooled by its cutesy appearance, as this show is terrifyingly good. Also, it's just terrifying. <laughs> Or at least some of the characters are. The show's cast are all based on different types of, you guessed it, cells and their specific functions within the body. From the white blood cells who diligently dart from place to place and just f***ing massacre all the bacteria and viruses that threaten their home's health, to the red blood cells who navigate its confusing network of veins and arteries to deliver oxygen and nutrients to other cells all over the body, to the adorable little platelets who are just doing their best to fix some scrape wounds. And I mean, look at them, they're so cute. This one got all shy and is hiding behind his hash. Aww. Okay, I'm getting off topic here. While it's easy to argue that they're all one note, the sheer variety of characters keeps it fresh as it explores the lives of all these different cells. As we see in episode 3, when the show switches focus from the struggles of a directionally challenged red blood cell, to the journey of an insecure naive T-cell finding the strength to become a badass bacteria basher like his fellow killer T's. <laughs> At least for a while, anyway. Though there is potential for their respective quirks to get old fast, the show builds a cast of memorable and distinct characters whose variety and interactions make for some good laughs, as it delves heavily into the absurdity of the situations they're thrown into. And I think that's part of what makes its terrifying nature, specifically the concerningly earnest bloodlust of some of its characters, work so well. The show contrasts all this intense violence and brutality against the happy-go-lucky atmosphere and pleasant aesthetic that makes it seem all the more ridiculous. It's aware of how weird it is and is more than happy to play with that, whether it be playing off the gimmicks its premise provides or poking fun at the tropes of its own medium. For example, there's a moment in the first episode where the main white blood cell points out that his knife is useless against... uh... This germ's shield. Something that seems like typical exposition for an anime series, where info dumping is a relatively common practice. And could have easily been said without consequence as it is in most series, except that here, the germ hears him and takes advantage of this new information. Also, did you mention this is being made by the same company doing JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? It's kinda subtle, so you might have missed it. The show leans into its own ridiculousness in such a way that makes its comedy and drama hit harder. And it does all this while being surprisingly informative. Sure, it's not the most accurate depiction of human biology, but it still manages to communicate a lot of the ideas of how all these different cells work and interact with our body pretty effectively. Who says education can't be fun? Nerd! Hey! Don't say it out loud, man, come on. And I have to say, I have little to complain about. Of course, given that it's only three episodes in, it's likely that more problems will become apparent or the ones I do have will be exacerbated, but so far it's been a lot of fun. The only thing I can really hold against it is that for me, some of the designs are boring. Sure, I quite like some of them, especially that of the red blood cells, from their vibrant uniforms to the red berets whose shape is reminiscent of actual blood cells. But there are others, especially the ones for the bacteria and viruses, that just feel kind of bland, but maybe that's just me. Cells of Work, while acting as yet another example of anime's obsession with anthropomorphization gone mad, is a pretty terrific experience. It's an informative and entertaining series with a wide cast of distinct characters whose self-aware antics and over-the-top absurdity adds to its comedy and drama. It's a show that's having fun with what it has, and for me, that's what makes it so fun to watch. And yeah, those are my thoughts. And hey, I'm back to the old format. Uh, long story short, it's kind of the same situation as with the Storyteller's Notebook. I wanted to experiment, found some things I liked, a lot of things I didn't, trying to mix the best of both worlds. As well, I've been thinking about trying to go back to making weekly videos that alternate between these quickie review first impressions and proper video essays, but that all depends on whether or not I can balance making two videos at once, but I'll do my best. Anyway, let me know what you think, if you agree, disagree, who your favorite cell is, if you're amazed by the things people have managed to make shows about, etc. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, and be sure to check out my last video where I talk about the ending of Darling and the Franks and why, for me, it fell apart. Or check out my video on Megalobox and why it's so fun to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe! to come fly at me. You can also follow me on Twitter for more updates about this channel and other stuff, and hopefully, I'll see you later.